Simple can be harder than complex. You have to work hard to get your thinking clean to make it simple. But it's worth it in the end, because once you get there, you can move mountains. Steve Jobs. And Mr. Jobs, who made billions of dollars for Apple Computer, revolutionized so many things. For those listening to the podcast, of course, thank you to Steve Jobs for helping create that entire genre of media and information, along with the iPhone, the iPod. I mean, we can just start going through all the things he revolutionized, and he continued to focus on simplicity. There is genius in simplicity. Any fool can make things complicated. And what we do here at Charting Wealth is we make the idea of following price movement as simple as possible, but not simpler. And what we have seen happening as we slowly move out of, and we're still not free of the summer doldrums of this time of year that started the market adage, sell in May and go away, live to trade another day. As we leave the summertime trading zone, school starts back, go through the transition zone and go into the fall winter trading zone. I'm looking forward to it. And of course, we have a little bit of a feel for that as we watch things get better and better, and better. And of course, what do we have underway? We had a weekly vertical crossover going down. That happened on Friday. We looked at an entry point on the S&P 500 at 3.55 p.m. at 292.28 going down. Where were we at the close of the day? 288.12. 292.28 to 288.12. Well, that's that's not bad. Uh, that is a little over $4. So we'll take that. And of course, we did record the jumping in point for potential options, both in the money, out of the money, and at the money. And again, remember, out of the money options have no intrinsic value. They have extrinsic value based upon the time value of the option. And and before I'm I'm not going to let myself get sidetracked off into that, I'm doing a special recording for you guys. Don't know how long it's going to be. I've already started doing the boards for it, the graphics. But it's going to be just options made simple, the charting wealth way. And I should have that recorded hopefully by the end of the week. I've got some time to devote to it this week, already been devoting time. So those of you interested in options going to be putting that out. But let me again caution you, if you can't do simple trades, simple practice trades with the ETFs that we follow here, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, TLT, 20-year bonds, and GLD gold, you're wasting your time with options. If you can't do simple share purchases and sells making money going up or down, so an inverse fund going down, or one of these four ETFs going up, if you can't do practice trades and do those successfully, you got no business even thinking about options. You got to learn to read the charts first. Options will kill you. Options are contracts that allow you to buy or sell a stock at a set price with an expiration date on the term. And if you can't make simple trades, practice trades, and do that successfully, you got no business throwing money down the drain of options because options go to zero. You buy a stock, it at least is not likely to go to zero. The Q's Bonds, NASDAQ 100, uh, S&P 500, and gold aren't going to zero. And an option goes to zero at some point if you don't exercise it. Options are bought to be sold, to be, well, typically not executed, but to be sold for a higher price. And again, if you don't know what it is we do here every day, asking questions about wanting to learn to trade options, you're putting the cart way before the horse. So, Take your time. People who are committed to what we do here will survive and thrive and do very, very well. But the get rich quickers 
you're wasting your time at this channel. Go somewhere else where somebody promises you a lot of stuff for nothing because what you're going to get in the end is nothing. But for those of you who are going to stick it out and want to learn, let's jump into these charts. What do we see happening on the S&P 500? Oh, by the way, special training for you at the end of, well, it's going to be in your show notes for those who subscribe at chartingwealth.com for free. You're going to see how to use the trade worksheet, which is what we should be filling out on all of these trades. We have a trade underway on everything. On the S&P 500, it's an inverse trade with something like SH. We are tracking SPY as to how much it goes down because I'm not switching all my charts. We're just going to use the main chart and it'll pretend that you bought a put or however you wish to do it. Remember, SH will track percentage to percentage. So we see a green closed box candle. What is that? Well, it's not a green open box candle. It's a cautionary candle. Again, we see down movement underway. We see the price percent oscillator still heading down. We see the derivative oscillator negative. If I move the crossover out of the way, you'll see why we have this green solid box candle. It's a rather odd thing to see this big. We usually see small ones. It's because we had so much down movement where things really stroked down over the course of the prior week. This week, hopefully we'll see this go red, solid red at some point, but we don't have that super down movement so far this week that we saw with the wick on the prior week. Now let me move the crossover back over. Like we said, derivative oscillator, price percent oscillator heading down. Go to the two-day chart. What do we see going on there? We see things sliding sideways and uh, down as far as the prior two-day candle. We saw it popping up a green spinning top. And of course, we see a red spinning top at this point, bigger than that prior green open box one. And of course, that green open box one ended on Friday. This is just the first day of the latest two-day candle. What's nice to see is that the price percent oscillator is heading down a steeper angle. Derivative oscillator is gaining momentum. And of course, that red spinning top means some indecision tending down. It's because we have the indecision is from that up movement on the wick. We go to the four-hour chart, hone in a little deeper. We can see where on Friday, where we had that crossing over going down, things had moved up. And then Friday, that inner upward energy petered off and then started moving over, going down, down in the morning and the afternoon, down 1.20%, so a decent down day. Four-hour chart hasn't crossed over going down yet, but of course what put us in was that weekly vertical crossover at the end of the day on Friday, so things are looking nice. We go to the Qs, NASDAQ 100, the tech stocks, same kind of setup with that green solid candle, derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum, price percent oscillator heading down, Looking nice, down for the day, 1.15%, not quite as much as the 1.2% down of the S&P 500. Oh, and for you keeping up with things, our jumping in point at 355 on Friday for the Qs, 186.90, and down for the day, 184.34. So again, what is that? $2.50, so uh, not too bad, uh, not too bad at all. So again, that's where we are in just a day. The magic of that weekly vertical crossover got a red down candle on the first day of the latest two-day candle. Price percent oscillator moving over for further down movement, sort of spiking over a little bit more. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Red down candle, no wick on top. And um, little wick on the bottom. And then we go to that four hour chart down in the morning, down in the afternoon. Still hasn't crossed over going down. Derivative oscillator is green, but our two bigger charts are moving down for us. So again, watch and see what there is to see and learn. You can take profits whenever you want to. Again, you've already had some decent movement potential for profit taking, particularly if you were practicing option buys that Friday afternoon. Now, we'll just continue to watch. And again, remember, we're not a stock calling service. We're an education firm, but we go on to more good news. Now, remember, we jumped into 20-year bonds on a practice trade back on the 2nd of August. 
in the afternoon on that Friday with that weekly vertical crossover going up. And we have seen substantial movement over the last week and even more as this day started 2.08% just on Monday. What was our jumping in point back on the 2nd of August? It was 136.29. 136.29. Where were we at the close of the day? 142.97. 142.97. A high of 143.43. Now, is that not sweet? Again, our jumping in point, 136.29. A high of 143.28. That's over the course of a week and a day. That's not bad, my friends. I kept telling you, stay with us as we get through this crappy fall-winter trading zone. And things have gotten so much nicer as we've again had a, we've just had a brilliant last week and a half or so. So again, it's not always this good, but it is good right now. And you know what you do? You rack up your virtual profits and you pat yourself on the back. Now we see the derivative oscillator spiking up, price percent oscillator heading up on that weekly chart. We go to the weekly to the two-day. What do we see there? Well, the first day of this latest two-day candle is heading up. We can see the price percent oscillator spiking up, derivative oscillator heading up. Nice big green up candle. We go to the four-hour chart. What do we see there? Up movement in the morning and the afternoon. And again, moving our Past high 143.06. Where did we end the day? The top 143.43. So it is higher. Price percent oscillators positive. Derivative oscillators negative still on that four hour chart. So we'll continue to watch, see what we have to see there. Again, you can take profits whenever you like. What do we see going on on gold? Well, remember the gold jumping in point Monday, the 5th of August at 3.55 at 137.82. Gold, 142.63 in less than a week. So again, that is almost $5. So again, not bad on gold, not bad at all. Week starting off up 0.97%. Price percent oscillator heading up, derivative oscillator losing some energy. But again, things are looking quite nice on everything. We look at the movement of the two-day chart. First day, the latest two-day candle heading up. Derivative oscillator, price percent oscillator going up. We go to that four-hour chart. What do we see it doing up in the morning and the afternoon, reaching higher highs than it has previously, which is nice. Derivative oscillator still losing momentum. Price percent oscillator a little more than flat. So again, keep your eye on things. Folks, it's nice to have a report to bring to you that everything is significantly moving in the right directions. Remember, downward plays on the S&P 500 and the Qs just for the day, up over 1% on both of those. And of course, we have upward plays on TLT and gold. Those of you who don't know what we're talking about when we start talking about downward plays, SH. That is the inverse fund for the S&P 500. Of course, it has been moving up as the S&P has been moving down. And of course, when we look at um, the Qs, PSQ, PSQ is of course the short for the um, Qs, the NASDAQ 100. It moves up as the NASDAQ 100 moves down. So again, that's what we're talking about and looking at as far as movement goes. That's where we are, folks. As we end the day, if you haven't purchased our book, hey, we've run out of the 11th edition. The 12th edition is at the printer right now. We will be filling, fulfilling the plethora of orders we got over the weekend with that new edition. It'll be autographed and going out to you a little bit further in the week. If you want to be on that special list to receive our book, sign up. We also are in the process of writing our new book, Optionable Wealth. But again, my friends, please take to heart. Learn how to read these stock charts. Do the practice trading.
keep up with your trade worksheet. There's free PDFs on the trade worksheet, daily market worksheet, and weekly market worksheet in your show notes. If you're listening on iTunes or another podcast service, if you're listening to us or watching us on YouTube, you're following us because you're a subscriber at chartingwealth.com. Wherever you are, you'll see a PDF to the daily market, weekly market, and trade worksheets. And again, if you want those special trainings we put out every day, become a subscriber at chartingwealth.com. It's absolutely free. We also use the texting service over the weekend to let everyone know that we had those crossovers on the S&P 500 and the Qs. And again, if you are not signed up for our texting service, remember, only caveats, you have to be in the States in order to receive it. We do announce it always on the comprehensive review and forecast we do over the weekend. But if you want to receive that texting service, live in the States, text to the number 33222. That's what you that's the number you use and you text the words charting wealth. It's really just one big word, charting wealth. Folks, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate all your support. Patreon supporters, don't forget our live question and answer call in this Wednesday, the 14th at 12:30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Already sent out the notices. If you didn't receive it, you're either getting uh, our, our mails going to spam or somehow we don't have your email address. So make sure that you let me know. CW at chartingwealth.com. Want to make sure you have the access code and the call in number if you're one of our Patreon supporters at any of our three levels. God bless. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters. <music>